Hello there, Eddie Mercado here with BloodyElbow.com, and I'm about to speak with the 13-3 Max Payne Griffin, as he is set to take on Sergio Marias at UFC Fight Night 106 in Fortaleza, Brazil. So we're going to give Max a call and find out what he's been up to since his last fight. Ask him about what it was like fighting up at altitude in Mexico City. And find out what he has in store for the Brazilian crowd. Yo. Mr. Max Payne Griffin, how are you, sir? I'm good. Hey, well, yeah, man, you're 13-3 and three right now. Coming off a crazy, just absolute waxing of Eric Montano. 54-second TKO in Mexico City in his backyard. How did that feel? It feels good. It feels good to to do what got me signed, you know. Honestly, it's a it's a relief to know I could do that, do what I do at that level. Okay. You know, so it feels good for my confidence and everything. Yeah, I mean, it was a, a really quick fight. Uh, you came out, you rocked him with a right hand, and uh, he kind of turned his back to you, and it, it looked like you clipped him with a left, and he kind of face planted, and. I mean, a couple ground strikes, and the ref called it. Um, I mean, you didn't really spend too much time in there to really let the altitude affect you, but I mean, did you notice any difference in the elevation? Yeah, when, uh, when we first got out there, uh, we did a lot of training out there. First day, first night, we trained a lot at the same time that I'd be fighting, just for my body to get used to fighting at that time and at the elevation. And uh, training was hard, you know, I'm not going to lie. It, um, like, I, like I said, I was using the hyperbaric chamber for it and in elevation, but I did notice it. But a few days in, um, it got easier and easier to hit pads and move around. So by the time the fight happened, I was, it was pretty normal to me. Okay. Do you think you'll still continue elevation training even if you're not going to fight at elevation? I will. It just takes a lot of time. Um, I'll probably get my own tent, too. It was just such a hassle, you know, to sleep in that tent every night. And, uh, but luckily, Fort is at, like, 69 feet or something. <laughs> so, uh, cardio has never been a problem for me. Okay. One of my strong points. Now, this was your second UFC fight. How much more comfortable did you feel than your debut? Because your debut was UFC 202. Nate Diaz versus McGregor, the rematch. What was it like uh, stepping in there for your second time? It was kind of more of a, like a been there, done that kind of thing, you know. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't overwhelmed. I wasn't like in awe. I wasn't like impressed with all the licks and the glam like the first time, you know. Um, it's a business trip, you know. The first time was kind of like, oh my god, I'm in the UFC. And, I can't believe it, you know. Now it's like, it's work. It's my job. So, it's like another day in the office, like, realistically, another day in the office. Okay. Now, it's what, a different location. What are some of the adjustments you made? I noticed uh, before UFC 202, your walkout, you were dancing, kind of just enjoying the moment. At fight night, you kind of were just focused and just looked in the zone. There was no dancing or anything. It, it looked kind of strictly business for you. Yeah, no, it is strictly business. Um, and maybe, like I said, the first time was, uh, there was a lot of, uh, it was, it was just overwhelming. You know, I didn't know how to feel. You know, you're at your dream, but how, how can you focus when you are distracted by what actually is happening? You know? So I, for that fight, I did, um, I hired a sports psychologist and worked with work with them a lot, and they got me focused on being in the moment, and you don't really know you're in the moment until you're working on being in the moment, like, like consciously, and um, my last fight was proof of that, and when I'm in the zone, no bullshit aside, I'm going to meet everybody. Okay. I have that. I have I have that capability. Now, that fight was in Mexico City. Now you're headed to Fortaleza, Brazil. So you're getting your passport stamped. What's it like being able to travel as, as part of your gig? I think it's cool, 
man. Um, it's a blessing, you know. I mean, I've been fighting in California for the longest, fighting in Oregon, moving around. But the you know, get on the plane and fly somewhere, and then I'm going to these locales, you know, Mexico City, Brazil. It's like I wouldn't say anyone would just go to Mexico City on their own, but they go to Brazil for vacation. And I'm looking forward to it. It's showing that, um, you know, what I'm doing is world-class stuff, and it's putting me around the world by, you know, my talent, what I've worked for. It's like kind of a, it's cool to get recognized for that and be able to fight around the world, fight the best in the world. It's an honor. Is that something that maybe you you would uh, prefer to do? Maybe fight overseas more so than in the States? I don't really mind, you know, I mean, I mean, it's on their dime, so if you want to send me, you know, to the UK or Italy or Australia, I kind of want to go to Australia, so if there's, you know, the ultimate fighter guy that was on Australia, <laughs> I'm down to go, you know, beat him up too. Okay, well, on your plate right now, Sergio Marias. He's eleven and two and one overall, five and one in the UFC. Uh, a BJJ world champion, but he's willing to stand and trade. You know, he's willing to go to war. What do you think of the stylistic matchup? I like it. You know, um, I feel like I feel like there's a there's a story that's being created by this. I mean, I don't think it's a. Uh, um, I don't think it's just by random chance that they're having me fight another um, ultimate fighter guy, you know? I mean, the last guy was Eric Montano, who won the ultimate fighter, Brazil, or, uh, sorry, Latin America and Mexico. Mm -hmm. And this guy is fighting, I mean, this guy was a finalist in Brazil, you know? So it's like I'm fighting all the ultimate fighters. <laughs> so it's kind of a cool little story. But uh, stylistically, I like it. He's a... He's a world champion, you know, this guy. Um, but he bangs it out. I don't know if it's his pride, but I've seen he's getting better. His hands are getting better and better every fight. And uh, he's tough, greedy. And he'll bang, you know, which, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to fight that. That's going to have action. You know, we're not just going to let move around and bullshit like he's down to slang him so I haven't had that before <laughs> yeah so I'm looking forward to that yeah that's a that's a good way to put it he's down to slang him for sure but how do you how do you see it playing out you think it's gonna be a war you think it's gonna go go the distance um I personally don't I'm gonna I'm gonna take him out um he has really good shit to world class obviously I mean but he's not, he's not really a, he's not a wrestler, you know? He has a single leg that he'll do sometimes, but if you watch his fight, you and you really know he's a good guy, as of late, you know? He really gets yeah. stands there and bangs, you know? And, and, and if he kind of gets a hold of you, then, you know, he'll do something to you. But uh, he's patient, you know? He's not really aggressive with his takedowns and aggressive with his jits. You know, he's more complacent with it, and I roll with him. Our own is pretty much all brown and black, so, you know. Well, you know, my coach, you know, Jake Gavara won the world. I mean, like, I have the caliber guys, too, that I roll with consistently, so, um, we'll see. And I know a lot of people are, you know, looking back at, like, the Colby fight and saying, oh, you just got wrestled. This guy's not a wrestler, and my mind was in a different place there. Um, so... You know, he might try to take me down, but I think his pride, especially fighting in Brazil, you know, I think he's just trying to try to take me out. You know, I think he's going to try to put on a show and have fun and uh, bang it out, which will end pretty early. Okay, awesome. Are you doing any kind of, like, special training or anything to prepare for him specifically? Mainly just situational. You know, we know what he does. So we've just been, you know, doing business as usual, uh, just training harder, smarter, faster, getting stronger. He's a strong guy. Um, working a lot of my muscle groups, muscle endurance, uh, a lot of stuff on the ground. 
just but more defense because you know he got that single leg. You know he just we just really been emulating the kind of stuff he does, the kind of attacks he does, just to nullify okay. some of those. But um, I'm still working on everything. Still working on my striking. Still working on my ground. You know I didn't just you know he's a black belt. I'm not just gonna stop striking and just. Uh, Work on my ground, you know, but my takedown defense is good. We've been working out a lot, heavily on the singles, heavily on all takedowns. Clinches, working, you know, causing damage in the clinch. I'm not just going to sit around and be complacent in the clinch. I'm going to hurt him. I'm going to hurt him every second I get. Um, and uh, finish the fight. Come away with the victory. I dig it. Now, do you know if the un- the new unified rules will be in effect in Brazil? They were telling us the hand down will not save you any longer. So we've been, um, I mean, I've been planning on throwing that knee, <laughs> you know. He's been knocked out with knees. I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm going to do everything I can. Have you know? been, have you been training more, uh, we'll say not knees to a downed opponent, but just those situations where maybe the opponent has one hand down and, you know. <laughs> really letting the knees go at that point? Yeah, I'm pretty conscious of that stuff anyway. Because a lot of people try to do that anyway to me. They try to not get knees or try to get attacked. Um, it's kind of like the Alex Riviera thing to me, right? Um, and what's tight is Tim's, my boy Tim's fighting on that car. He's getting a rematch against him for the same kind of thing, right? The, the downed opponent, he's looking at knees to the head. Yeah. So uh, we'll see how it plays out in Brazil. Okay. Uh-huh. Also, well, you got any uh, sponsors or people you want to give a shout out to? Man, I have so many, and I say I feel like it's the same song, but I can say a few. My jams, uh, Mary Noble's martial arts, best kickboxing, best of everything. Um, Dave Mary Noble, my head sensei. Um, Jamie Hart, BJJ, he's my kids coach. At Tim Carnage, yeah, Coach Doug, he's my strength and conditioning coach, my nutritionist, best in the game. Uh, MMA Gold, that's my team, and uh, Coach Grinder, he does my wrestling, Iowa State, uh, from Iowa, he works me, gets me going. Really, just all my people, my fans. Uh, I don't know, everyone. You know, I have so many actual things. I am Beast Mode, I am Becoming, uh, Max Nutrition. I mean, the list goes on and on. And I could, they're really just everyone that supported me over the years and, you know, friends, fans, okay. everyone, because I have so much support. It's, it's amazing. I dig it. I dig it. Now, how can people follow you? Let's hear your uh, social media platforms. Follow me on Twitter, Snapchat, Facebook, everything. It's Max Payne MMA. I got a website, www.maxpainemma.com. You can find some of my stuff on there. And follow my videos, see what's up next for me. You know, we're coming. I'm up and coming. We're coming. They're, uh, I'm coming hot. So, I do. You know, I appreciate the, the support. Jump on while you can. Absolutely. Well, Max Payne Griffin, thank you so much for taking out the time. I really appreciate it. You're headed to Fortaleza, Brazil to take on Sergio Marias in his backyard. Best of luck to you, sir. Thanks so much, Eddie. You're awesome. You've been there from the beginning. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. Always a pleasure. So there you have it. The 13-3 and Max Payne Griffin set to take on Sergio Marias in Fortaleza, Brazil on March 11th. Go check that out. In the meantime, you can read me on bloodyelbow.com. You can follow me on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado. If you like these interviews, you can subscribe to my channel in your upper left-hand corner. Check out Bloody Elbow's YouTube channel in the bottom left-hand corner. There's some interviews on the right for you. Now go be a good person. <laughs>